Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode. I have a really fun topic tonight, and it is mediumship. As you know, I love anything to do with psychics, tarot, mediums, magic. And I have Debbie Johnson here from Florida. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Marla. Thanks for having me. Yes. So uh, we I recently met Debbie, and um, when she told me what she does for a living. I'm like, okay, you've got to get on the, on the podcast. So I want to know how, I always want to know how someone became a medium. Were you born this way? Were you like a little girl scene, like that sixth sense movie or <laughs> tell us the, tell us the story. It was very much like that movie. I was about four or five and I could see people in my room oh. at night. And they were dressed from a different time. They weren't dressed like us. Mm. I remember the clothing was different. And I would run and get my mom. And I'm like, there's people in my room. And she would come in and go, there's nothing in your room. Go to bed. And it probably happened like three times before she just didn't even come look again. Yeah. And... I would see other things and be told that none of it was real. So at a very young age, the gift was never nurtured and kind of shut down. Yeah. As kids, we, you know, when I was uh, about two or three, I know it was two or three because we were living in a certain house in Olympia and then mm -hmm. we moved at four. So, and I had my own room and I was on my bed. I remember in the middle of the night, it, I was laying on top. It must've been summer because I was warm. And I, I looked out into the, I opened my eyes and there was a, a being there and, but it was all, it was a figure, but it was like all black. You couldn't see no, I couldn't see features or anything. It was just an all black figure of, of a humanoid. And it started doing what it looked like was deep knee bends. <laughs> and I was frozen. I was like, I, I did, I was scared, but I was just frozen. And, and I was looking, I'm, I was like, I didn't say anything. And then I closed my eyes. And when I opened them, he it was gone. And then the, the, the spirit guide, Red Eagle, um, who my shaman, you guys may have heard me talk about uh, Red Eagle. He told me when I asked him once, um, Red Eagle is a spirit guide that my shaman channels. And I asked Red Eagle, Could you, can you tell me who that is? And he said, that was a temp, a guide. That was a temp. And we have guides who are temps and they'll come in and he mm -hmm. was clearing. You had an ear infection or something that he was clearing. And it looked like he was doing neat D bends, but he was doing some kind of like clearing. So that was very interesting. But I remember that like it was yesterday and it was when I was three. So oh, wow. anyway, I just wanted to share that because it's in it seems like we see things when we're that age because we're just came off from the other side. Right. And we're also open. We don't have the logical mind getting in the way at that age. You know, I, I think that's the most pure age. It's we learn too much logic blocks a lot of that sensory gift. Yeah. Yeah. So then when did you start ta tapping into that again? So it came back in my 20s. Um, and not, not wanted it to come back. It came back through music. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a musician and I hear music the same way I would maybe see or hear the other side. Mm -hmm. I was seeing images back then and maybe hearing some stuff. But now I started to hear music in my head and sing it. Okay. And then I would go to record it and then I would hear someone's grandma talk in the recording studio and I'm like, do you have a grandma who just passed? And it, it would, it would always match or freak the person out. And I started hearing at that point more than seeing, but it was definitely not what I wanted. I was, it was kind of annoying. And it was also, um, I had to learn that most people weren't ready to hear what I had to say you know, very similar to my childhood experience. So again, I shut it down again mm. at that time. And I, how did you I shut it down? Did you just say, I don't want this, and you just said it out loud, or how did you really shut it down? Well, I I would ignore it, or I wouldn't talk about it. Yeah. But it never really went away, you know. Um, and 
finally I, around I was just about 30 like 29 30 I did I took Reiki and because I had severe anxiety at that point and um the Reiki opened it up in a way that made it balanced and natural and um made sense out of it yeah reiki too when i got uh um attuned to reiki at about 2014 um i did the all three levels and then i did i was able to start channeling my angel and i could uh write i type up messages for people and it would come through after the reiki the yeah. reiki helps develop uh, your your gift that you already have whatever you have already it seemed to um organize it in a way that was highest and best for me and i've seen that happen with other people with their specific gifts so it's really uh, helpful you know whatever your gift is mm -hmm. that's beautiful and so then did you go ever go into any other career in a uh, you know career or did you start doing this professionally right around then or i i started treating uh at that time i was still very involved with music and still writing i wrote dance music and different styles of music at that time and um i started treating people for anxiety only um because i had suffered from that too and the reiki helped with that mm -hmm. so i they would come for reiki sessions and it would help with anxiety, but I would see all their loved ones. I say, "You do you want to hear who's here?" Oh my gosh! So what happened was they would come again, and they say, "I really don't want Reiki. I, I want you to tell me who's here." That's how it started. Okay, and so um, you know, in training as a medium, which I'm doing, you know, I, I didn't now, and learning <laughs> more about it and working on it, because I'll get flashes of, of insight or some information, but not a sustained. So they say, you've got to uh, raise your frequency up, and then the uh, spirit raises its frequency, goes down so that you kind of meet in the middle. Is that what you find? Or, or is it just, you know, like, that. I never heard. I've never heard that explanation. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what ha that happens, but I don't. That's I don't, like what James von Prague and the famous mediums say. You you have to raise your frequency up, and it's very hard for them to come down. So they come down to meet you. So you've got to be in that state, you know, meditating and running the energy to get up. But maybe there there's people that are just like you. They're just so open. They're just popping in, and you're not consciously. Yeah, doing, you know. I don't consciously do it. it it's. I don't think I, I don't even think about it. So I don't even know. That's so interesting. I never, I, yeah, I never really thought about how. I just know it's real. And so when you, like if you're just walking around the grocery store or you're talking to somebody like we're talking, do you see people with them or do you have to kind of say, okay, let me, well, I'm working now. And then you sit down with somebody and then it opens up or how does it work for you? So you're not bombarded, you know? Well, that was a big problem prior to Reiki. So, mm -hmm. and it was really, dis it was debilitating almost because I wouldn't go anywhere. I would, I stopped wanting to go anywhere. And um, I made a deal with the angels. I said, I'm only going to do this if someone asks mm -hmm. and if it helps them. Mm -hmm. So if no one's asking, uh, I, it's off. I'm able, I'm able to turn it off if they're not asking okay yeah i wait for someone to ask <laughs> <laughs> but now that's what you, but you do it for a career so they'll order a reading right yeah yeah people make an appointment and that that's the only way i tap in now i don't i don't do it any other way mm -hmm. okay and um have you ever worked like with the, the police or find, found anyone yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that any stories that that you know yeah yeah i've done two cases with the police actually three um they're extremely exhausting i would say for a medium um it, the emotional intensity of murders uh especially that's the when when you the, when they want a medium it's usually related to murder yeah and um I don't feel of the pain, but I will 
have a vision that I'm the victim and I can see who's hurting me. I can tell the police what they did because I can feel it, but I don't feel it. Mm -hmm. I don't experience the pain, but I know what's being done. Yeah. If that helps. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And I can see the person doing it. And that's what helps them the most. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, oh, that's what they look like. And usually, I'd say two out of the three times I did it, one of, one of the descriptions was already in the lineup or close description. And that just kind of helps them narrow yeah. it down. It It's never providing evidence. It's more helping the police narrow it down with other clues or other um, things I might see. Yeah, or seeing the location where the body might be. Is that something that you've been able to... Yeah, where they, the police usually take you to the location. And oh. like I would sit in the location and get the visions. But um, yeah, if it's if it's remote or a phone call, it would I could see stuff about. Yeah, because the there's a lot of missing yeah. children and they want to know where they are. They're probably dead, you know, and to bring or them. if they're alive. Yeah. Or yeah, if they're or even alive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that must be very satisfying. I would love to do do that. Um, but you said it's very exhausting and maybe set depressing and hard. It's it's hard. Um, I, I I will tell one thing: it is rewarding. But you know, I can usually work and read for about seven, six or seven people a day, no problem. But if I, I do a case like that, I can't work for three days because okay. all my energy it takes that much energy to do it and when you say you could do six or seven people a day is that like one hour sessions do you usually do? okay yeah about an hour a day yeah. and then the platform mediumship do you do any of that where you're up on a stage and there's 50 people or 30 people no you don't do that mm -hmm. i can't do that <laughs> or, or you know i don't think uh i there's the, there's when you take spiritualists when you actually take the spirit on and i have felt that like an attempt for the spirits to try and go through me. And I, I won't, I, I don't like it. I ask them to not do that. And what's great about the spirit world is you can actually control it. You can say, uh, -uh. Mm, yeah. and I, I don't let, I don't allow it. So I'm not, I'd work much better and under private, um, quarters <laughs> and then do you work with like your do you have a specific spirit guide that you work with that helps you connect with these people or anything like that or are you in touch you know do you connect with your spirit guide or it's mostly angels coming to you it's all angels and then it's whatever loved ones come in to help that specific person like that person's family members or loved ones or best friend it's it's more specific to the person I'm reading for, and then always the archangels um, are there. Oh, that's beautiful. And what have they uh, said? Are they always? Is there always an archangel with a person when they're passing, or um, it's just always different when someone passes? When someone passes, this is what. So I look for patterns, and when someone is passing. If I see an angel hovering over the body, I can tap into the person and tell, okay, yeah, it's close. That's the only thing I'll, I'll notice is an angel will hover over the body really closely within six days of death. Wow. They'll like be like a foot above the body or loved ones start gathering prior to that. The loved ones that are already over there start to help the person prior to that but um yeah within six days it's usually that short time and until that time i wouldn't know if the person would actually pass it's usually that last six days i can tell mm -hmm. my mother passed away uh, uh september 6th and um 
Ooh, so sorry. I, yeah, it was really rough. And I, um, she was 86 and she had cancer and um, she died at home in her bed where she wanted to be. But I was the one who had to be administering the morphine and, you know, it's brutal. It's, it's mm -hmm. brutal. But so I left and went to LA and her, I have her house in Seattle still, right? I'm going to be going back up there soon, but I would down here. I think I told you this on a text or something. I, I said, I, so two friends have seen uh, signs already. So her friend, one of her friends um, who lives down the street from her, who's in her late eighties has an iPad. And she said she freaked out because she was on her iPad. And all of a sudden um, a message popped up that said, Donna Reed says, hi. And my I mom, <laughs> yeah, and my mom never texted in her life, never had a cell phone. And I never <laughs> been an old, you know, text that popped up or anything. Cause she's never had one. And so she was like, I couldn't believe it and stuff. And I was like, Oh my God. She, and then <laughs> another friend went in the house. I said, can you go in the house? Cause I've been away for a couple months. And I said, can you go in and turn on the heat and just check the house? And he's like, sure. So he goes in and then I get a call and I get a call and I say, Oh my God, you won't believe this. I swear to God, it's the truth. I swear to God, 95. I'm, I'm not making this up. I would never make this up. And I'm like, what? he goes, I was in in there and I, I I walked in the house and I made a mental note that there's no light lights on in the house. You know, I noticed that there's no lights on. And then he went in one room and checked it, came in the kitchen again, and then the light above the stove was had been turned on. And he was like, oh my God. And you know, so he was sure it was her and and uh, so it's so exciting. So I can't wait to get back. You know, um, I'm just waiting. My dog has a tumor on her leg. We're going to get a, a surgery. So I can't go back there yet. I have to wait in LA. And it's like this hurry up and wait. So I'm like, I can't wait to get back up there and see if she's because she loved her home. She loved her home. And I'm sure she's going to be in there doing some stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. If they are happy, and I pick up your mother is at peace and happy, they resonate with electricity and lights and electronics if they're not happy or they're earthbound and stuff they are messing with the plumbing oh. plumbing's a nightmare okay what do they do to the plumbing do they turn on water or do they what do they do leaks I mean, oh toilet won't flush or toilet will keeps backing up wow. that's real common yeah okay. i don't think she'll do that to me because she won't want me to have to pay to get a <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's already messing with electronics. It's already electronics, which is so cool. And I've heard that's because uh, we are electric uh, frequency. That's what also Red Eagle, the spirit guide that talks about this. He said, we are a frequency, our soul and everything and electronics are a frequency. And that's why they can mess with it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that's great. Let's see. Yeah. So uh, a happy is high frequency electronics and angels too oh, yeah will interfere with high frequency low frequencies water will okay. mess with the water yeah oh interesting and sometimes door you know people will talk about well what about these like real act activity haunted houses with poltergeists or something they have cupboard doors opening plates flying out of the cupboards or something you know have you Heard about that. I mean, that's got to take a lot of energy from the spirit. Yes. There was a restaurant in LA where the dishwasher got held down at least for two minutes by a spirit and he never came back to work. I heard about it in LA. Wow. I actually went to the building and checked it out. So there are sometimes a spirit and I will say this, if it's moving at that much of a force, it's usually extremely dark energy mm -hmm. because because loved ones push a penny, they can push a feather. They're they're lighter objects, but when you go into slamming doors, pushing um, you know heavy objects or anything dark, I would say that was a very dark energy, and um, that's. That's when you have angels clear it out. Major. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I hear about those on different whatever podcasters. People talk about it or something, but I've never um, seen that happen. And people will say like, "Oh, my father, my grandfather leaves me dimes, or leaves me pennies, or leaves these." And yeah, I wonder how are they? Where do they get these? They can apport. 
apport them out of the thin air or you know do you have any any insight on how they're doing this leaving things or feathers or whatever i think they push them i think they 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 push them and make you look oh, okay. I, you know it could be something that's been sitting there and they just pushed it a little bit i don't think so some people find it on the sidewalk or you know whatever yeah yeah their consciousness affected your consciousness and actually made you look in that mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. you might have just walked by but they wanted you to see it so they made you they really work that's, unconscious that happens with my brother's name he passed away um in 2004 his name's brett with two t's so it's not too popular you know to to and and so i'll look i'll be like whatever in needing some you know kind of needing something in a bad place in my life or whatever kind of and then i'll i'll look on a just like I'll be driving and I'll just happen to look at this one telephone pole or something. And there'll be a sign that said Brett or in a bookstore, there was his name was right on, on a shelf or, I mean, it's just, yeah. and I did ask him for a sign one day. I, I said to send me a sign because I was with one of his friends and I said, send me a sign, send me a sign today. I don't know what you can send me. And then I forgot about it. And I hung out with his friend and we went to a bookstore and then I went around the corner and there on the, um, it was taped like a, it just said Brett. You taped on the, oh, wow. the shelf. I took a picture of it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he must have pushed me towards that, like, turn yeah. here. Yeah. Turn here is pretty he, cool. His, his consciousness of, affected yours. So when, when a loved one is within eight feet of you, okay, your consciousness is, is interacting with theirs. It's why you think of them. They're within eight feet of you. You think of them. Or they tell you, look to the right. You know, you're not really hearing it. You just kind of yeah. look. Right. Yeah. It, it, they, that means a loved one's right. Usually when you see the dime, when you saw the name Brett, which is freaking awesome, he was right there. Mm -hmm. He was, he was with you. He was That's amazing. Yeah. Cause I've seen his name on things, on polls, on signs when I think, you know, and look right over and there it's, yeah. what about pets? Now, do you tap into pets or animals? Yes, and this is crazy. The soul uh, or dealing with pets, it's identical as human. It's identical. Um, they, they hang out within eight feet. They don't want to leave you. They, you know, they love you. They're, 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 when they're on the other side, they're joyful. The only thing I, I will say about pets, between pet and human crossing, Pets never get stuck. They're never earthbound or purgatory. Humans kind of can get stuck quite a bit, you know, or go to the light. Pets always go right up. Mm. They always go right to light. They never, because they don't have ego. There's no ego. And then there's so many um, dogs and cats who are euthanized. You know, they're in the, in the, in the, uh, what do you call it? Know and the t pound or whatever you call it, and the rest and then but they don't have anybody to so i guess they just go up there and then they reincarnate or something right or they go right to the light every single animal goes right to the light and they're blessed and and their souls at that point they can do whatever they want they can come back or they can stay you know we kind of get to choose when we're up there like mm -hmm. think about it for a second what do i want to do now yeah yeah, it's 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 heartwarming to think our pets are still um, so close because, you know, it's it's almost it's just as hard to lose a pet than it is if any family member, because we're even closer. We're with our pet daily. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, you're not with maybe you're, when you're grown up, you're not with your parents every day or whatever, but you're with sleep with that pet, walk that, pet, you know, everything. So, there's, oh, yeah. Yeah, I love my 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 dog more. She comes number one. <laughs> <laughs> So are you still making music? I am. I am. I, I work with healing frequencies, um, you know, uh, sound healing, healing frequencies, crystal bowls. And I record them with a writing partner who does electronic music. So we combine the two together. And then you make these on CD or uh, MP3s or how do you? Um... They're MP3s and they're also on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. They're available everywhere. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I'll put the link in the show notes. 
Okay. And so what's your main, so you're doing the healing frequencies, the music, and then the readings. That's what you're busy with. That's your full time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. That's, that's uh, I, the two favorite things I love to do music and talk to angels and loved ones. That's my so, two favorite things. Oh, that's so beautiful. If somebody wants a reading with you, um, do you do it on a zoom with a video or do you do, it's their choice. They could either do phone or just sound or video. How do you prefer? It's their choice. They can do uh, Zoom or um, phone. But I always say this. My number one way to read someone is sound. So I work with sound the most. So it, it really doesn't. I don't need to see the person. But mm. a lot of people, they prefer it. They like yeah. to be, you know, they want to see. Yeah. But I work with sound the most. Okay, beautiful. And uh, you're in Florida. Um, and then you said you come out to LA sometimes and do some in-person stuff. Yeah, I'm in LA and um, I, I send an email every month or, I put, or I'll post it. Um, I go to LA and do in-person sessions every three months. Mm -hmm. So I'm in West LA every three months um, doing in-person sessions. When's your next one? Do you know when's your... Yeah. It'll be in March. Okay. All right. For spring. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. For sure. All right. Great. Well, I will put all of that in the show notes. And Debbie, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your gift. And thank it, you, Marla. Yeah. Hey, and you guys, if you uh, are a medium, if you've had any any activity from a loved one, lights coming on, any electricity, leave um, a comment. We want to hear about it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Much love. <laughs>